Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. Well, two guys and a gal today. Hey, love it, love it. Morning, uh, brother. How I are know. you, man? Good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Hey, just want to let you know, and, and this is absolutely a curveball, but yeah, I, yeah. we just went live on Instagram for a couple minutes here as we go ahead and kick off. So we, uh, we've never done this before. Are we live right now? We're live right now. All right. Hello, Instagram folks. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if we get Mikey there in there. Go. There we go. Hello, Instagram folks. Yeah, here's uh, Mike and community. Glenn live in the Sober Sober Dot Coffee podcast uh, coffee shop. So. Yeah. Dial in, check out the check out sober.com. Yeah, absolutely sober. right. Sober.coffee.com. Absolutely right. No. So good morning, brother. How are you, man? Doing great, man. What's going on today? Hey, a couple things. I uh, want to remind people that uh, we do post blogs often and on the um, on the Sober.coffee website. Check them Love out. Love that website, Sober.coffee. So yeah. it's not Sober.coffee.com. No, net, just straight EU. up dot .coffee. Yeah, we're that cool. So easy, man. Yeah, we're I mean, just I don't that think cool. anybody else has a dot .coffee domain, but uh, it'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah, so, someone's got to start. Nope. Love it. All right, excellent. So uh, today, uh, I want to jump right in today. Um, We've got a guest on uh, from uh, Care Addiction Center, a uh, substance abuse counselor. Counselor, am I right? Absolutely. Hey, Tori. Hi, Tori. Good morning. Yeah, we're so super excited to have you, and I love today's topic. And we started talking before uh, before we lit the wires live, and uh, and you know, look, we are just. And I love the way Glenn says it, and I'll let him say it because he says it better than I. But we're pro sobriety. You know, we mm-hmm. we are we are products of a program called uh, it's a twelve step program, which means there's tw- kind of twelve steps uh, to the program. <laughs> Go figure. Otherwise, they would call it a thirteen step program, I guess. <laughs> but uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and that's just kind of where 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 we came out of, and and what kind of keeps us sober. Mm-hmm. I mean, we both admit that's that's a big part of our our journey is is what uh, Alcoholics Anonymous has done for us. But the but the key thing is, is there's other programs out there and there's other paths to sobriety. And we thought we'd get somebody who is smarter than us. And uh, yeah, and so we did that. We uh, we had to, we didn't have to dig too deep to get anybody smarter than us. But um, but we're super glad that Tori came on because she is a lot smarter than us. Yeah. Hey, Hi. Welcome, Tori. So you've been at this for a while. This um, this mm-hmm. s- sobriety co- abuse counselor, you s- substance abuse counselor. You've been at, at this a while, right? Um, a little, uh, almost two years. Okay. So not too long. Right. Right. Definitely a gift. Definitely a gift. Um, I really liked how you guys talked about there being different paths, right? Mm-hmm. Because everybody has that favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe, and. Uh, we all think ours is the best. Cause yeah, it's right. Our Wait, it isn't? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I think mine's best. Mm. Um, but the, the recipes are a little different, mm-hmm. right? So just trying to find out what makes my perfect chocolate chip cookie, right? Uh, what are the ingredients? Maybe it's a little bit of different um, paths. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that a lot. Yeah, so so if I could just jump in, you know what? And and I love that chocolate chip cookie recipe, right? Um but you know, and 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 we on on our podcast, we've had quite a number of different programs, you know, come come through, and and just to kind of share, you know, we have tried collectively different programs ourselves mm-hmm. along our sober path. True story. You know, um, they didn't work, right? Or mm-hmm. or or they didn't work anywhere near the the impact and positive change that the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous led to, right? So that's just our story. We applaud pro sobriety. Like, like, like we said, we're pro sobriety. I mean, mm-hmm. anybody that is trying to get away from drugs and alcohol and the devastation and pain that they cause, oh. we, we applaud. We want to try to help support, et cetera. So we've designated, you know, quite a number of episodes towards alternatives to AA, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what, what I have found, and, and one of the secret ingredients that I have found for me, is I had to get to the point of surrender, 
right? And, and because I tried my way so many times, and I got the mm-hmm. same result. A disastrous relapse. I played this game, what hospital detox am I going to next? And I did that mm-hmm. well over 75 times. Um, and, and I really sucked at that game. Um, and, and a lot of the, or a number of the alternative programs today are a quote unquote, create your own, right? It's like, it's like, well, you can take a piece of this and a piece of this and a piece of this and a piece of this. And I think there was one, I forget what it was called, but it was actually create your own sober program. Mm -hmm. Well, Glenn did that for quite a number of years and it was literally you know, what, what hospital am I going to next? Mm -hmm. Right. So I had to find a program that I had to totally surrender to. And I remember back in 2014, my counselor's name was Matt. It was a program care addiction recovery program out of Geneva, Illinois. I sat on the floor on a Friday afternoon and I said, I will do whatever you tell me to do. I just cannot take another drink. And, and for me, that is how I define my surrender. And it was literally no more Glenn's stinking thinking, right? Mm-hmm. So, Tori, to use your analogy of the chocolate chip cookie, what Glenn did is I want to create my own recipe, right? Yeah. So I had, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I would bring in, you know, some Italian dressing from the fridge and some mm-hmm. flour, some sugar, some chocolate chip cookie mix, and I put some peanut butter in there, and I put some yogurt in there. I mean, I, because th- that's the stuff I like. That's the stuff that worked for me. I didn't want the ingredients that caused me to change or to make me feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I remember that, that, that guy, Matt, made me sit in a chair for three hours all by myself with the clouds. Mm-hmm. No phone, no nothing. And, and I didn't want that. I never would have selected that ingredient. Mm-hmm. That was one of the most painful things I went through in my life. But you had to put it in the bowl and mix it, didn't you? But that's what made chocolate chip cookies is I had to take a recipe that was proven Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I surrendered to that recipe. And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do everything you tell me to do. And to this day, I still follow that recipe. I don't follow my own recipe. Because you know, Italian dressing doesn't work I well. I was going to say that sounds really nasty. Cookies. But, you know, my mom is so funny. My mom will say, I'll say, Mom, these are the best chocolate chip cookies ever. My mom makes the best ones, right? And I believe that with my heart of hearts. She says, honey, it's on the bed of my, back of the Toll House bag. You know, and but I know better because she puts a little dash, an extra dash of something in there. She pulls in a little bit of it. Maybe she uses a little few more morsels in the. She cooks them a little longer. I don't know what she does, but that, but she says it comes right off the bag of of the of the chips. So, so I don't know. I can you can you take this all these ingredients on the table and make us a cookie out of this conversation? <laughs> Absolutely, um, and you know with. So the Buddhist path to recovery is, um, so the Buddha never actually talked about addiction, but what he did talk about is the idea of an awakening and the awakening is the end of suffering. Craving causes suffering, addiction causes suffering. So with like refuge recovery and Dharma recovery, um, there's like the three jewels of Buddhism, right? Which the Buddha is the potential for an awakening the goal of the path, the Dharma is how we get there. And the Sangha is who we travel with, right? So um, if you're kind of like looking at it at AA kind of standpoint, it's like that spiritual awakening, the fellowship and the steps, right? Right. Um, There's a lot of kind of similarities. I think for me, um, because I've practiced both AA and refuge recovery, Mm -hmm. I kind of see a lot of crosshairs, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, how is it um, changed so it might be easier to digest? Mm-hmm. Um, so they talk a lot about the the feeling tone, right? We're constantly chasing the feeling that the addiction is, right? Whether it's it's numbing pain, um, it's excitement, whatever it is, is we get attached to that feeling. Mm-hmm. So you know that expression, always chasing that first high, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Always chasing that first feeling. So the idea is to not get attached, the non-attachment, mm-hmm. right? It's more of a secular path, whereas like AA would be the linear, the mm-hmm. steps. Um, they follow the four noble truths, which is pretty simple. There is suffering. There is a cause for suffering. 
there's an end to suffering and there is a path that leads to that end of suffering. And the path we follow is the eightfold path, which is um, kind of like that saying of just do the next right thing. Right. right? Be okay. conscious right. of who I am, you know, right. uh, wise understanding, wise intention, wise speech, wise action, wise livelihood, wise effort, wise mindfulness, and wise concentration. And it's instead of having like a sponsor, they have mentors or like Buddha buddies or Dharma buddies that you kind of create your Sangha with, your your fellowship, right? Mm -hmm. um, the meetings start with a meditation practice, like a 10, 15 minute meditation. And I think, you know, because um, I do practice AA that in the beginning when I started with that was so helpful when I hit 10, 11, and 12, right? I was able to have that conscious context because I had the meditation practice. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a topic and you go into discussions instead of like a four step, there's like truth inventories where you take stock of your suffering, right? Uh, who did I hurt? What opportunities did I miss out on because of my addiction? Um, and the meetings, it's kind of for addiction of any kind. And for me, what it kind of created was that idea of the disease, the disease as it was, right? It didn't matter what I was addicted to. It was all about, you know, like the, the Buddha was very um, conscious that the human brain was into that obsessive compulsive thinking, right? Sure, right. Um, I've been in meetings with people from Gamblers Anonymous, um, Al-Anon. It's just an abstinent based program anything that creates that craving that compulsion that obsession we abstain from right yeah it's kind of like cr uh, celebrate recovery where it's hurts hang-ups and whatever you know habits yeah, hurts yeah, hang-ups yeah. and habits it's yeah. it's all this destructive yeah so i like to jump in so you know it's so it's just so funny how we have like these stereotypes or we have just our own personal history with, with words, mm -hmm. right? Like for yes. example, in, in AA, <clears throat> I, um, you know, folks come in and they hear the word God, right? Mm -hmm. And just that three letter word. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, there's, there's a, there's a portion of people that will turn around and, and leave. Physically or mentally leave. Yeah. Right. Like may, yeah. maybe not in that first right. three minutes, but they're, they're not checked coming out. back. Right. right. They're not coming back. Right. This is a God program. I can't, I hate God. I, my image of God. Right. <clears throat> so Tori, when you used the word, you know, uh, Buddhist, right. Mm -hmm. it, it reminded, cause, cause I have a vision of what that word means for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, 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 and I'll just share it. Let's just, let's just, I'll, I'll just put it out there. And, and so my, my first kind of experience was I read this book, the Tao of Pooh. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, Taoism and, and, you know, and, and that really made sense to me. I mean, I, I just, that just really clicked and, and like, I mean, that start. I'm like, there's, this is an easier way of living and thinking of, of life. Right. So mm -hmm. my uh, dad, I, I can remember like it was yesterday, it was 2005. My mom and dad never drank. I've never saw him drink their whole life. Very spiritual Christian people. And, and my I asked my dad, I said, Dad, I'm having a hard time. Will you come live with me for a month? He goes, okay. Mm. So he came live with me. And one night I can remember, um, you know, sharing him. And, and I read him like eight, you know, you know, principles, you know, of, of Buddha and, 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 you know, Buddhist, you know, principles. And, and, and he looked at me, he said, Glenn, they are just amazing principles to live by. You know, and, and just the, the thinking and, and, you know, Glenn, that would be great to, to transition. You know, if, if you could really start on a regular daily basis, just embracing that and living that way. And, and he goes, where'd you find it? I'm like, well, they're like, like Buddhist principles. And he's like, oh, my gosh, they're like terrible. We're, they're, yeah, what, right. what in the world? And, and, yeah, and I'm like, wait a minute. The concept was good. Yeah, wait a minute. You know, you just <laughs> said. So it was, you know, it was just and, and I always remember that. Right. I'm like, that is such bull crap. I mean, I love my dad, but I mean, he, he wasn't perfect, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe he was brainwashed in, 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 in his way. But that's the baggage, right, of, of, of what people hear. And if if we get beyond that, right, and just keep an open mind and get beyond the word Buddhist or get beyond the word the God, word God mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. then then we, we can 
you know, if we can let down that guard or whatever it's called, then we can start to open ourselves to a new way. Yeah, right. You know, because if you stay in your old way, the old thinking, the old Glenn, it didn't never, work. I'm never going to change. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so I love that. Yeah, it's outstanding. So, so what you're describing though is is refuge then. Um, refuge recovery and Dharma recovery are two of the more popular kind of like Buddhist paths to recovery. Right. Um, and they're brought there. The meeting setup is very similar. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. and like the fellowship, it would be like Buddha buddies or Dharma buddies. Or, mm -hmm. it, it's very similar. It's just kind of, again, wording. Right? Right, right. Um, you know, and I liked the idea of like, you know, when people come in and they talk about, they hear the word God, they mm -hmm. automatically think, you know, religion. Right. right. Um, and just with like the Buddhist path where um, it can have two meanings. The first is the historical figure. Right. That we automatically think of. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like religion. Sure. Um, but in the path, it's more the idea of the awakening and the awakening being the end of suffering. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. And that I mean, isn't that what that's what I aspired. I just wanted to stop the pain. I, yes. that, that's all. That's all I want. I couldn't define it. I didn't know how to get right. there. And much like Glenn, uh, I just said help. And I didn't even. I didn't. It wasn't a strategy. It wasn't a spiritual moment. I literally, out of complete defeat, said, "I need mm -hmm. help." Not knowing where yeah. it was going to lead me to, and then just being open to whatever help. I mean, I okay, I ask for help and all of a sudden I'm in a detox center. I ask for help, all of a sudden I'm in a rehab. I, you know, I'm, uh, I ask for help, all of a sudden I'm in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. I ask for help, all of a sudden I got a sponsor. I ask for help, all of a sudden, right? It's just, the, the Beautiful. more, the more I gave up, the more I gained, you know? Yep. And, uh, and that journey has continued. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it's that thinking, right? I can't use the same thinking that got me here to think my yeah, way out of it. That's one of right? Glenn's favorite lines. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. And I tried that for mm -hmm. so long. It just doesn't work. Right, right. Yeah. I needed an uh -huh. outside influence that I needed to surrender to. So, Tori, let mm -hmm. me ask you this. Um, you're, mm -hmm. you're a substance abuse counselor, and somebody mm -hmm. comes in, and you probably have been in the same situation Glenn just said. Well, you know, people are saying, well, how do I get, how do I get, well, what do you, what do you recommend to them? Because... Because you're right, they might not be open to Buddhism. They might not be open to Christianity. They might not be open to Old Testament God. They might not be open to to anything spiritual at all. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you help them? How do you counsel them to to the next step? Well, you know, it's always easier to meet somebody where mm -hmm. they're at, mm -hmm. right? I can't put my expectations on somebody and expect them to be where I feel they should mm -hmm. be, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of working along somebody and kind of figuring out what they're willing to do. How do I stay sober, right? Honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, you know, especially in like IOP treatment, it is the power of the group. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, sure. Somebody usually starts uh, attending AA attraction rather than promotion. Right. Sure. right? Sure. And then they start to listen to their peers, you know, and um, being willing to meet, take meet clients in an AA meeting, have them set up together to go to an AA meeting or try refuge online mm -hmm. or Dharma online, um, providing resources, you know, tapping in. What are you willing to do? I can't make you do anything, right? I can mm -hmm. offer suggestions and hold your hand and love you along the way. Right. Now, you've got a personal story where you could say, I I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what worked for me. What and, I did. Mm -hmm. Right, which is beautiful because I've never looked at Glenn as my educated leader. <laughs> you know, I look at Glenn as, okay, he's got what I want. Um, and and he's not going to tell me what to do. He just keeps telling me what he's doing and what he's yeah. done. And I take that as an example and, and run with it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let me ask you this. Why do you think people, um, because I have heard people say AA doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. or, or they say AA doesn't work for them. Or to expand it, any of these other recovery programs don't seem to work for people. Why do you think that is? Um, I know for me, mine was pretty much fueled by my stubbornness, right? Mm -hmm. But my addiction was also fueled by my stubbornness. Mm -hmm. um, that unwillingness to surrender, because if I could um, prove 
that recovery programs didn't work, I had an excuse to justify my mm. drinking, mm-hmm. right? Um, so it's a lot about the so stubbornness. So maybe they didn't want to work. You know, right? Like self sabotage. Hi, see, honey, look, I yeah. tried, yeah. honey, right. I tried. It doesn't work. Those yeah, people are weird. Yeah. You know what I love? I I love it. it, it I've been I in the it. program for a couple of days and. And, you know, we talk about things like ego and pride. And and I kind of, like, I'm kind of connected to that, but I tell myself I don't have a lot of ego. I tell myself I don't have a lot of pride. But you just said a word, stubborn. That is a real word and a real character that defined me for 50-plus years of my life. I was stubborn. And and Mm -hmm. I haven't written that word down in a long time. That's what I was. So, yeah, you could probably unpack it and say, well, that's a a fear or ego or pride or, okay, all those, all those emotions. Bottom line, I was stubborn, right? Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, and, you know, it's not to say when, if a client was to say, I've tried it before, I've tried it before, because I've heard that a million times, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm a different person today than I was yesterday. Right. Just because I tried it before doesn't mean it won't work today. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe there's some part of me that's been broken down a little bit more and I'm more willing and open to hearing the message and hearing what I need to. Sure. Um, but willing to take action. Right. I can't lay on the couch and wish for a better job without getting up and filling the resume. I have to do something mm-hmm. to make it happen. Right. You know, so open Keep openness. Going. I'm hearing you say willingness. I'm hearing you say and then action. I'm hearing you say, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. And you and you got to be to double dip on the term willing. You got to be willing to be open, willing, and honest, and and action. Yeah. You know, taking action. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love it, Tori. I anything to expound on on your end that you'd love the let's let's talk to the to the new let's talk to the sober curious for a second because <laughs> yeah. you know that's such a big hot term right now and and uh you know the bottom line is that statistically speaking we read the other day that 47 percent of all u.s adults say that they are uncomfortable with the level of alcohol consumption and mm. only and only one out of one out of one per less than one percent do anything about it. Seek help. They don't pick up the phone and talk to Tori, an experienced substance abuse counselor. They don't. They're not going to an AA meeting where they're going to run into Glenn. Less than one percent do. Let's talk to the sober curious for a second. And what advice would you give them? Because you see what happens when you go from sober curious to the road to recovery. What advice would you give them? You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes, mm. right? Mm. Um, fear is what I think keeps people out there for so long. Fear of change, right? Um, whereas I might be miserable, it's comfortable because I'm used to it. And I think that it takes a lot of courage to reach out for help, you know? Um, and you don't know what will happen unless you try. But if we keep doing the same thing, same results, right? Definition of insanity. That's right. And I you're worth it. it. I you love it. You're so worth it. Great. Yeah. Tori, thanks. You know, we really, we just... We only just opened the bag of chocolate chip kernels here. We haven't really, we didn't, we, we really need to talk about the sugar and the flour. We need to unpack this more. Will you come back with us sometime? Absolutely. I appreciate the invitation, you guys. It was lovely. Great, That's Tori. great, Tori. Thanks Thank so you much. so Have much for day. joining us here in the Sober Coffee Shop. Thank you. All right. See you, Glenn. See you, Mikey. Thanks for joining us for today's Coffee Chat. To contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week, and remember, there is a solution.